Hi folks, it's Will here back once again for another Fight Card Prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night 89 from uh, the TD Place Arena in Ottawa, Canada. As UFC makes a return up north. Um, great to see them go back to Canada. Canada is one of the best places I've ever been for a live event. Great people, great uh, great food, just a really great vibe in that country. Um, as always, you can follow me at Will Martin, 7 M uh, Will Martin MMA on Twitter. Um, and always follow the guys down below who I try and endorse a little bit. They put out great content from um, Half the Battle from Daniel Levy, Rockstar Z with his fight predictions on Fight Week, Flying Brian MMA, we've got my two favourite podcasts in the Part and Shot podcast and uh, the Severe MMA podcast. And um, if you're looking for a one on one uh, interviews with fighters, James Lynch, a great Canadian himself, um, does. Absolutely great work with fighters, and he did some with Wonder Boy, Rhoda McDonald back in the summer there, uh, back in um, a few months ago. Sorry, and uh, you should go follow that guy. He has great interviews. You, you find a lot about the upcoming fighters coming through the promotions from uh, UFC, RFA, CES, um, Victory FC, uh, Titan. Just go follow that guy. As always, please let me know your fight card predictions down below and let me know your picks. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to get straight into this. Flyweight division. Ali Bagutinov against Gene Herrera. This is a fight I'm actually really interested to see. Um, and I'm actually... I think that the underdog... I probably will bet the underdog in this one. Um, Bagutinov, I mean, in the UFC, he's only lost to the two best flyweights. And the other two best flyweights... In the UFC, in Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavides. Um, this is his second fight in only two years. He got popped for EPO after that fight with Demetrius. Then he came back with Benavides. Lost pretty convincingly. Didn't really have too much for Benavides, in all honesty. Um, a heavy hitter with that sample background, so he can always rely. If he's, the striking's not working for him, he can always rely on the. the um, the grappling aspect of it, very good grappler, can, once he gets you down there, very top heavy um, and just kind of rains punches and, and um, knees to the body and can keep you there for the whole fight and kind of win the fight convincingly. Gene Herrera is a guy I'm actually very, very high on. He came into the UFC uh, and lost to Ray Borg in his debut. Now, Ray Borg's definitely one of the up-and-comer, uh, up-and-coming flyweights in, in the world and will be a, a big prospect in probably a few years' time. I think people pushed him a little bit quick. I think I might have been one of those people as well. Um, very heavy hands. He knocked out Joby Sanchez last time and um, got very good hand speed, very quick feet, good scrambler. His takedown defence, um, a little bit to be desired there. I can see Bagatinov... Um, target in that area and try and keep him there because I do think he can get him down but I think the quickness of Herrera he can definitely get back to his feet and um, keep this fight where I think he probably has an advantage with his overall speed and he has got very heavy hands with decent combinations um, pick wise I think I'm going to have to go with the smarter pick which is Ali Bagotinov. I really wanted to pick Gian, uh, Gene Herrera here um, I will probably end up betting Gene Herrera because I can see him being a plus 200 dog maybe more, um, and that is worth a shot in my opinion, but we will see once the odds come out for that, but my, my pick for on here is going to be Ali Bagotinov via decision. Welterweight division, we have Colby Covington against Jonathan Murnier. This was supposed to be Alex Garcia, he got, I think he was either injured or he might have been popped for something, I could be wrong, should have read that there. This, this should be a win now for Colby Covington, you're not going to get an easier fight coming back after your first loss like he did to Varley Alves. Um, very tough loss. I um, I thought he would have. He just got to with Valley Alves. You got to get past the initial burst in the first round. If you get past that, you're going to him, uh, beat him just like Brian Barberina did. Um, All American wrestler. Um, Mooney, not from what I've seen, not overly great. Trains at a tri star. I've been helping McDonald um, for this um, for the for the for his fight here. So he's been in fight. Um, he's been in shape. Whether he was in fight shape is another thing. My pick's going to be Colby Covington. I just don't see where money is going to really affect um, affect him at all and really hurt him. I don't see it in the feet. I think once it goes to the ground, I think Covington is just a, a whole different animal down there. We'll take him down. We'll grind him out. Um, I can probably see a submission victory for Colby Covington here. I'm going to go early round number three. Women's strawweight division where Randa Marcos against Jocelyn jones Lieberger. I think this fight is very, very close. I see a lot of people picking Marcos. I may, myself may pick Marcos, but I think Jones Lieberger 
has a very good chance of winning this one. Uh, Marcos, I don't think she's been as impressive as she was on the Tough Show a couple of years back. Um, came into the UFC with quite a lot of hype from, from being from Canada, which was quite nice. She's a really nice girl. Um, a lot of people are saying really nice things about her. But come in to the UFC, she um, she's trading losses and wins at the minute. She is coming off a pretty devastating loss to uh, Karlina Kovalkovic, who has come into the UFC and been fantastic. Um, lost to Jessica Penny, beat Aislinn Daly in, in Canada for UFC 186. And then obviously she kind of got outstruck and kind of beat up a little bit by uh, Karlina Kovalkovic. Jones Leibarger. Um, came into UFC on short notes against Tisha Torres. I thought she gave a good account of herself. Probably not what she... She probably thought she could give a little bit more. Pretty tall fighter. Um, keeps you at the end of her jab. Um, it's just overall a pretty, really good fighter. And um, I think she could give Marcos trouble here if she can stop the takedown. And um, just kind of beat Marcos up from distance. Kovalkovic did that and get in with some nice combinations. If Jones Leibarger... Um, can do that. I think that um, she could have a lot of success in this fight. I think this fight is very, very close. I don't see it being. Everybody, I've seen people say, "Oh, Marcos, we are blowout." Um, I don't see that one. But I think Leibar has a chance here. I'm going to go Mar. I am going to go Marcos, but I think it's going to be a split decision. I can see Jones Leibar taking rounds off Marcos here. Uh, but my pick will be Marcos split decision. Um, and the the, the the big fight for the, the fight pass card, we have Elias Theodoro against Smile and Sam Alvey. Good, good fight. These guys were kind of jawing each other on Twitter a little bit um, before Theodoro lost. I think before Alvey even lost as well. Theodoro coming off that loss to Thiago Santos where he got beat up. He started off very well um, and then just kind of faded out and he got a, a massive cut over his... Um, his left eye I believe it was uh, Santos is just a beast and he showed great takedown defence I think Theodora went to the well too much on that and he got caught out uh, with some big strikes um, and Santos got him there Salma Alvey got absolutely blasted by Derek Brunson who is streaking through the middleweight division um, this is another very close fight the early fights in here are very close um, in fact there's, throughout the whole card it's just a very close fight card um, Sam Alvey has some decent wrestling um, train out of uh, I think it was Team Quest I, no it's not, it's Hendel's Gym which I can't remember off the top of my head um, so he's got that, he's, he's been around a long time being a veteran, he was a veteran of the, the Canadian fight scene with MFC, I think he was a champion up there, big big power if he catches your chin dead on, you're, you're in big big trouble um, I'm going to go Theodoro, I'm a little bit, I feel more confident picking Theodoro um, I've seen other people pick Alvey, I think that could be a smart pick on their behalf, but my pick will be Elias Theodore via decision. Moving on to Fox Sports 2 card, we have Chris Beal against Joe Soto. This was supposed to be Kid Yamamoto against Chris Beal um, before he pulled out with duty injury. Uh, Chris Beal, I think it's better that him being back up at 135. I think 125, It was the, the cut was a, a big thing for him down there and... Um, he just kind of hurt himself and he hurt his performance by going down there. Lost to Neil Seary, lost to Chris Kaledis last time out. Um, a win before that against Te Te Teke Matsuda and uh, I think it was Patrick Williams flying knee. I think it was a pretty extortionate flying knee. Um, all around pretty good fight, a good speed. Gas is out throughout, but that might be when you've seen him at 125, so his gas tank might be a little bit better for here, pretty good takedown defence, athletic guy, um, good speed about him, so if he can keep that going throughout the fight, I think he has a chance to win, Joe Soto, I'm a little bit surprised this guy's still in the UFC now, maybe the UFC are just giving him a big opportunity, because he came in late notice against TJ Dillashaw, I thought he'd have a spirited performance against Dillashaw, probably his best performance in the UFC, uh, since he's been in the UFC, he got knocked out by Anthony Burchak, who can, who can bang, and um, then he lost a very close split decision to Mishinori um, Tanaka last time out. I see this being another close fight. Uh, and I feel if Joso can get past the initial stage of Beal throwing those heavy strikes and trying to put him against the cage and unloading him, I think he can he can win the fight. But I think being at 135, I think Beal's going to have a... Um, if his cardio keeps up, I think he's going to have a chance to win this fight. So my pick's going to be Chris Beal. We had another, uh, another decision. Next up in the middleweight division, we have Tam Dan McCrory against uh, Christoph Yotko. 
Now I've viewed, I've watched Christoph York go live a few times, and this guy is just a spoiler of a fighter. All around pretty decent, um, strikes very well, has very good grappling, very good control. In the clinch he's pretty decent as well, nice um, knees to the body, he's got elbows off the exchanges um, in there. Just an all around decent professional, really good professional coming out of Poland. But I think Tam Dan McCrory, I mean this is his second fight since Orlando, he's returned to the UFC in Orlando back in December where he beat Josh Saman. Uh, I think this is the type of fighter who can beat Yotko. Um, he's got skills everywhere, very good striker um, with very good, well not a very good striker, a decent striker with very good submissions, very long rangey guy. The one thing when I was watching Yotko against Scott Askham was that Askham had his chances on the feet, was doing well. Once it went to the ground, Yotko had a distinct advantage. Um, but I think McCrory is a very um, dangerous fighter down there. Long limbs, looks for submissions. If he catches you in something, you're not going to get out. Um, very creative with his submissions as well. Um, and positions himself. He, the way, Even when he's back, if you watch him, he moves. He has great angles off his back to catch you with arm bars to catch you with triangle chokes, um, even to get back to his feet. Um, I think McCrory can finish this fight. I see people picking Yotko. Don't think that's a bad pick as well because he is a, a spoiler fighter. I think McCrory has more weapons and more ways to finish the fight, and I see him finishing this fight. McCrory via submission in round number two for me. Light heat, heavyweight division. Misha Sakunov against Ion Kutilaba. I think it's another good fight for sucking off. They're giving him the slow roll here in the UFC. We've seen him against Alex Nicholson last time out. Um, prospect really kind of developing through. He beat Daniel Jolly, Alex Nicholson. These guys probably aren't even UFC kind of heavyweight. So they are definitely giving him the slow roll. Um, beat Daniel Jolly via KO. And uh, beat Alex Nicholson via neck crank back at um, the Hendricks Thompson event back in January. Sucking off, he's alright on the feet, nothing special. Once it hits the ground, he's a big guy down there and he, he transitions himself very, very well. Kutalaba, on the other hand, he doesn't have much skills when it goes to um, when he's on his feet either. So he'll be looking for takedowns and just kind of staying heavy and try to get decisions, um, try and nick rounds um, with due to strikes and that. But I don't think he can do that with Misha Sakhanov. I think Sakhanov is stronger. I think he's just that bit more athletic. He's a definitely the, the better jiu-jitsu guy down there. He's gonna if he looks for something, um, he will he will probably find it via whether it be a Kimura. Um, if he gets your back, I think it'll be done for Kutalaba personally. Um, my pick's gonna be sucking off. I think it's gonna be another submission. I think it's gonna be in the second round. I think Kutalaba will come out strong, but he may kind of fade a little bit quickly. Pick's gonna be sucking off via submission. Uh, and the, the headline fight of the prelim card is a pretty intriguing one as well. Jason Sago against Leandro Silva. Um, Sago, I thought he looked very impressive last time out in his um, fight. He um, beat Justin Salas, TKO at UFC 196 back in March. But I think he had a long layoff due to injury. Lost to Paul Felder, beat Josh Shockley in his other two UFC fights. That Felder fight could have easily went to him in my opinion. But... Um, Decent professional is Jason Sago, but he is, what well, like I've been saying through most of this card, he is decent on the feet, but he has got some legit skills when it goes to the ground there. And I think against Leandro Silva in this fight, he can definitely capitalise on that. And um, I think saying that Silva is going to be the bigger guy here. He comes down, he's one of these kind of big bulking Brazilians that comes down to 155. There's many of them, which I have too many to name off the top of my head. But... Um, just a decent, decent fighter is Jason Sago. I think Buscape Silva here. He's, to be fair, he's did really, really well. Trains out American top team. Um, beat Efrain Escudero. Beat Luis Gonzalez, which was a little bit... He kind of had some problems in that fight, but he did come through with a unanimous decision victory. Um, had that fight with Drew Doble, which was an absolute joke. Um, was maybe on the way to kind of losing that fight, in all honesty. Um, this is a close fight. Being in Canada, I think that Jason Sago is going to be pumped up for this fight. I think he's definitely got... I think his skills are just a little bit more sharper than what Leandro Silva's is. And he will... He's got a pretty good uh, clinch as well, to be honest with you. I watched that as well. He's um, If he can put you against the cage in the kind of clinch, he can hit you with strikes before he drops down and looks for that takedown. He loves to go for the single leg as well. Um... I see it being a very close fight. I can see it going to decision. I can see Silva maybe taking a round, 
But I think Jason Sago might just want it a wee bit more in this one. And I'm going to go Sago. I feel more confident picking Jason Sago. Uh, uh, Silva, as he might become an underdog in this one, this might be a bet I look at to throw a little bit of money on if Silva is an underdog because it's going to be close, I believe. So, But my pick on here um, for you guys is going to be Jason Sago v Decision. Moving on to the main card, and the fight I am most looking forward to outside of the main event is Valerie Letourneau against Joanne Calderwood in the first ever fight in the UFC women's flyweight division. Um, I think it's a very, very intriguing fight. Um, when I heard it was 125, I was like, oh, have we got a new belt coming at all? Um, but it's just, this seems a one-off, and I think it's a smart decision because Letourneau, she offers nothing to the 115-pound division anymore after she lost to Yun Yun JJ. I think the cut is just too much for her. She's When you see her at the weigh-ins, she looks terrible. It's horrible to see. So drawn out. She's one of these people that the one, the 125 pound division, a division, is the division she should be in. If the UFC bring in, she'd be perfect for that division. Big girl. 115 is too much. 135. She's just a little bit too small. Um, Joanne Calder would another hand could you can maybe say the same. Not overly too big for 115. Definitely too small for 135. 125 is the perfect division. There's many other fighters out there I think that could do the same. Jessica I might be another one. Um, possibly Misha Tate. But um, this matchup I see this being another close one. And it's kind of a head over heart one as well because I love Joanne Calderwood and I have done. I'm a huge fan of hers. I mean the last time she fought in Glasgow I was very fortunate enough to walk out behind her in front of my um, my own country and to see I know what I was feeling when I was walking out behind that and for her it must have been crazy um, an experience that I will never forget came out got the victory got a nice bonus out of it she's changed camp she's moved to TriStar from what I'm hearing from a few people over there there's a few Scots over there that I know um, she is doing very very well over there she's adapted very well she's got a great head coach with for us as a hobby and Eric O'Keefe who's helped her tremendously um, there's just loads of good a nucleus of good European fighters over there a couple that I know and tell me that Joanne has just flourished over there she misses home she's very much a home person but she's really shown a lot of uh, improvements in her overall game over there her, her um, strengths as a Muay Thai um, very she's to be honest with you it's really the only thing she has she doesn't she showed a little bit against Courtney Casey a little bit of um her ground skills or ground and pound and stuff but um her takedown defense isn't overly great her kind of striking defense isn't overly great she keeps her head in there she gets hit by everybody Casey hit her um Rose hit her um I think Hamdali Silva even got some strikes off um if she can get better at the other aspects of her game she will be a, a good fight, a great fighter to kind of watch out for. 115, 125 if that comes along. Great elbows, great knees in the clinch, and just great long range striking with a, a spinning back kick. She caught Casey with that, took uh, knocked her down. Um, but Letourneau is a big, big girl and she hits very hard. She's going to be the bigger fight on this one. Um, but what is Letourneau's? Um, what's Letourneau's? She's like, what's she want to do now? She's she, she's fought for the title, she's a mother, she's maybe thinking about um, moving on to the next chapter of her life, but it's very close. She's Overall, she's a very good fighter. She I means she knocked down Morose with a big right hand. Um, I thought again she in JCheck, she, she was very accomplished. Um, she did well. She got beat up a little, but she stayed in there for the whole fight. She gave Yin JCheck some problems. Uh, I'm going to go with the kind of hungrier fighter. I believe that Joanne Calderwood, being at this new camp, being, um, she needs to make a kind of run in some of these divisions. I know the 125 is a new one, but this could help her down at 115, give her more confidence. Joanne's very much a confidence kind of fighter. She needs that to kind of move forward. I'm going to go with the hungrier fighter. I believe that is Joanne Calderwood. If she doesn't get caught early, because her striking defense is actually very, very, it's not good at all. Um, or not great, I should say. Um, I don't know. I don't want to pull me up on that. So, um, my pick's going to be Joanne Calderwood. I think she can outlast her over the three rounds as long as she keeps busy, keeps putting paper in the Latino shots. My pick will be Joanne Calderwood. That's probably a, a kind of heart overhead one. Um, I was thinking about going with Latino, but I'm going to go with the Hunger Fighter and Joanne Calderwood. Next up, uh, lightweight division. Um, Olivier Aubin Mercier against Thibaut Gauthier. I was pretty. 
in my fight predictions for London, I thought Gauti had a great chance of beating Pakalan, and he got starched by Pakalan. Got beat up in the feet, got down to the ground, got submitted within, I think it was about a minute. I don't see... I think Mercy is definitely a fighter who's progressing with his striking. His submissions are great. He's got great judo. Um, keeps his hips really close to you once you're in clinch there. So you can't really take him down too much. And you can um, flip him over in the judo and get into side control, which he's did a few times before. I lost last time to Carlos Diego Ferreira. I think this is a good fight for Open Mercy. I say Gauti. I think it's overall a pretty good fight. I just think... I picked him to win in London. I thought he would give Pakalan trouble, but he was just, he got starched in that fight. And I think being in Canada, Open Mercy is a progressing fighter as well. I like him here. So I'm going to go Open Mercy um, via submission in round number three, I believe. I think he can catch him later on once he kind of breaks Gouty down. If not, a pretty dominant decision. I've seen a lot of submissions in this card. Uh, next up, a light heavyweight banger Steve Bossig and Sean O'Connell. These guys are going to come out and try and find each other's chin. And I think that Steve Bossy will do that. I know he beat James Dahuna, who has retired now. He was maybe looking to retirement in that fight down in Australia. But Bossy, is, all he's really got is this striking. Um, he was a goon back in his hockey days. Um, loved the fight, loved the fist fight. But um, Sean O'Connell has some big power as well. We have seen that in the past. Um, came out and he, he blasted Anthony Paroche. He came out and um, Matt Van Buren was another one. Got knocked, down, but knocked out by Ila Latifi. This guy either kind of wins by knockout or he gets knocked out himself. I just think that Steve Bossy, um, he throws the kind of more tighter strikes. Not by much. Um, but Sean O'Connell has gas problems. He gasses very, very badly. I just think that Steve Bossy is going to find that chin like he did against Tahuna. It doesn't take much for him to... To find that chin, and once he does, you're going to sleep. My pick's going to be Steve Bossy. I believe it will be a first round knockout for Steve Bossy. Cool main event of the night, welterweight fight. Donald Cowboy Saloon against Patrick Cote. I think is a really, really good fight for a cool main event. Um, and I give Patrick Cote a big chance to win this fight. I think that Saroni is in this kind of place now. He doesn't really know what to do. 155, he's had his title shots down there. He's had his big fights. Moved up to 170. He doesn't have to cut as much weight. Um, kind of just have kind of more fun fun fights up there like this one is here but is he really going to be a, a realistic challenge at 170 I don't see it um, do, do I think Cote will be I don't see it either but I think that Cote is a dangerous guy to be facing right now um, he's kind of having his second wind in his career right now um, a guy who's been around for a long long time fought for the middleweight title Moved down to 170. And since then, he's coming off a three-fight win streak with his only loss in his last five um, to uh, Wonderboy. Wonderboy, who's in the main event here. And he, he was pretty decent in that fight as well. Beat Joe Riggs, which is not saying much. Josh Butman, he knocked out, which is a big thing because Butman doesn't really get stopped. And then he TKO'd um, Killer, B, uh, Killer B Ben Saunders. And he went down to the ground with Ben Saunders in that fight. So that shows you how confident he is right now. Um, big power hitter. Um, if he gets you in the positions where he can unload and you're in big trouble, showing some um, more kind of grappling skills in his second window, uh, second um, opportunity in the UFC. Cowboy Cerrone, great Muay Thai kickboxer, great strikes, great leg kicks, great kicks to the body. Um, but he can be hit and he can be hurt. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've seen against Dos Anjos, Dos Anjos come out um, unloaded on his body and just really hurt him. And uh, kind of folded him up. I think Cote can do that. I don't think he's as fast as Dos Anjos. I don't think he's as strong maybe as Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos is a beast. Um, but I can see Patrick Cote potentially winning this fight. I've been going back and forward with it. When this fight first happened, I was like, yeah, Donald Cerrone, I think, is going to win this fight. But I'm a little bit back and forward. I won't be uh, betting on this fight. I did have a parlay with um, Theodoro Sakunov. Um, McCrory, I think it was Olivier Orson Open Mercy with um, Donald Cerrone. But I think I'll be taking that one off and maybe adding someone else just to my parlay. I'm going to pick Donald Cerrone. I am not confident in that pick whatsoever because I think Cote can win this fight. But my pick will be Donald Cerrone via decision. I don't think he'll stop Cote. He might do with submissions if it goes to the ground later on. Pick will be Cerrone, not confident one bit. 
main event. This is a great, great fight. This is one of the fights I've been looking forward to. Rory the Red King McDonald against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Now, we will start with Stephen Thompson because he's the guy who's surging through the welterweight division. And see, for just watching a fighter, his skill set is just... I love seeing different skill sets within uh, MMA. You've got your, your typical wrestler coming straight forward, looking to take you down, beat you up down there. Kind of like a Brock Lesnar, um, who'll be back at UFC 200, which is crazy. Stephen Thompson's got that karate background... Um, that's pretty much all he's known his whole entire life, and um, he is phenomenal at doing that. Coming off his biggest win um, at UFC, Hendricks versus Thompson back in the year, and he totally, he f he fucked Johnny Hendricks up bad. His striking, his footwork, his angles, his um, shot selection was incredible. His speed was incredible. Put Hendricks against the cage, and he just hit him with a body kick and then followed up with punches, and... Um, I picked Tom's. I bet Thompson. I won me a lot of money that night. But it just overall, he's oh, he's such a great fighter to watch. I seen him live with my own eyes against Jake Ellenberger, and he was phenomenal. Um, and this is the guy who's beat Patrick Cote, who's a heavy hitter, beat Robert Whittaker. Now we know what that guy's doing in the middleweight division. So he's knocking out legit guys in this welterweight division. I mean, Whittaker is no joke. Ellenberger, a veteran, he's kind of deteriorated a little bit. But Hendricks. I know he's coming back after that loss, um, but he he totally starched Johnny Hendricks. Showed some good takedown defense in that as well, but he just beat him up. Rory McDonald, I think Rory McDonald was very smart to take a long time off. I'm seeing people saying, oh, he's been out a long time. After that, you have that type of fight like you did at 189 like against Robbie Lawler last week, uh, last year. Um, you need to take that time off. He got beat up bad. His nose got busted up. Um, he was maybe four minutes away, three and a half minutes away from becoming the UFC welterweight champion. I think if he got through that round, um, I think he probably would have eked a decision in that one. Um, and just an unbelievable fight to be there to watch that live. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with both guys. It was just warrior versus warrior. And McDonald, he's come up stuck against Robbie Lawler. He's just got kind of got that spirit that he's gonna he's gonna keep going. He's gonna stop you. Robbie Lawler's a scary guy in that those last couple of rounds. Um, Rory McDonald, just a smart, smart fighter who is, I think, getting underlooked by a lot of people in this fight. I think that McDonald is one of the legit guys at 170. Well, for as long as he stays in the UFC, because this is his last fight on his contract here, he may go to Bellator. Um, I hope he doesn't. I think he, he can definitely be the UFC welterweight champion. Smart fighter, keeps you at ja uh, keeps you keeps you away with his long jab. Um, good leg kicks, just a smart striker, he, he throws smart shots, um, got some decent power there, we've seen that against Safadine when he knocked him out, good grappling, um, we've seen this guy, he's pretty much his whole kind of career come through the UFC from a young guy moving forward, um, I'm hearing good things about him at TriStar as well, through the people that I know, um, I think people are selling uh, kind of on the hype train of Steve, Stephen Thompson and they should be because Stephen Thompson is a great fighter and he will he can be a champion in this division just like Rory McDonald is but I just think this is a fight that Rory McDonald is going to steal rounds off Stephen Thompson he has to go off first which is hard against Thompson um, but if he can get off first um, and win the, some of the exchanges because Thompson is really good at winning those exchanges if he can do that he can eke rounds out and being in Canada hometown decisions always come a factor when you've got to look into that when you're looking at fights it shouldn't be but it is i think rory mcdonald can steal at least three rounds and my pick will be rory mcdonald wanted to pick stephen thompson um but i think rory mcdonald's just a really good fighter and people are kind of underestimating him a little bit so that's my picks for um ufc fight night 89 from ottawa i'll be back for the run-up to ufc 200 with the fight card on the thursday night the Friday night and the Saturday night. Um, come follow me on Twitter, Will Martin Seven MMA, uh, Will Martin MMA. Sorry, go follow the good guys and support them down below, please. Let me know your picks. Let me know your predictions, uh, and I'll be back for that very big run. And there's like six events between the 9th of July and I think into August, and then it, go, it keeps on going. So um, I'll be back for that. Come in. Um, just enjoy the fights when they come around, sorry, and I will see you for UFC Fight Night 90, Dos Anjos versus Alvarez. Take care.